Yesterday, I went to an opening at Gross McLeaf and ambushed the very likable and tolerant artist with my iPhone. Hi, I'm Naomi Chung, and welcome to my show. I'm here from Richmond, Virginia. Hi, Naomi. Your show is unbelievably beautiful. How did you get so good? Well, <laughs> I would say years and years of painting since I was little and just being fascinated by it. Where did you go to art school? I went to Virginia Commonwealth University for my undergrad, and I went to University of Pennsylvania for grad school, which is why I'm still connected to the Philadelphia area. When did you start showing at Gross McLeaf? When it was time to leave UPenn, I was packing up my stuff. One of my classmates, Mark Brousseau, invited all of us to enter into a juried show. And then I went on a trip to Italy with my mom, and I came back and he said, your paintings in the Philadelphia Inquirer, there's a review talking about your work. Since that year that I graduated from UPenn, 2000, Sharon just kept showing my work. She's really been there from the start, <laughs> and while it's sad to see her go, it's very exciting to see this new group coming in and doing some great things. So It's very unusual for us to take on somebody right out of graduate school, and I think you had a show with us about a year or two after you graduated? Yeah, in 2002, yeah. which is an unusual event for us. I remember I yeah. eight paintings sold before they even made it yeah. to the gallery. Yeah. <laughs> I love seeing the development. She's a wonderful printmaker, too. I mean, she can do anything, but I, it's been really interesting to see the, the progression of her work over the years. Here's a little sample of that progression, starting with a figure painting she did back in 1998. At the University of Pennsylvania, Naomi won awards for her abstract paintings. But a few years later, she turned to representation. At Penn, did they encourage you to do any particular style? No, they encouraged me to just experiment, and that's really what I did those two years. I was in that studio from morning till night. I just had that luxury of not being afraid to ruin a painting. There was no pressure, and it was all about investigation, exploring, and figuring it out as I went, and then talking about it with some great visiting artists. That was the strength of UPenn's program at the time that I was there. So yeah, those were two really good years. Her abstract paintings were so good, I asked her why she made the switch to representation. One day my grandfather came to visit and he saw my abstract paintings and he just said, what is this? <laughs> so I took it personal and I don't know, that could have had some influence, but also having taught at William and Mary for a year and realizing that there's some of these formal elements that I was trying to tackle, that led me to tighter realism. Later, starting to teach color theory forced me to really think about how color works, and that got me into looking at flowers and the effects of light and shadow on those flowers and finding all the, the range of colors and knowing what it takes to capture it realistically. I asked Naomi about her technique for these new paintings. There was an underpainting. Uh, a lot of these brighter colors were underneath it. Some of it is acrylic paint. And I mapped out from a photo this foliage and then layer upon layer, mixing colors, applying that paint one at a time and being real careful about making each one have its own place on the canvas. Later, there was a lot of things I added to balance out the composition. Do you that, use a, a particular medium? Just linseed oil. Earlier works, I used the stand oil because it was thicker. Uh -huh. um, and that's when I was doing more abstract. And I throw in the paint on the canvas. So this is a little bit more careful application of the paint. But I do like changing the texture of the paint so that sometimes thick, sometimes washes, sometimes transparent. Do you use brushes exclusively or do you ever use a palette knife? I used to use the palette knife a lot, but these mostly were done with brushes. And how do you know when to leave little things like that alone? I know that I would overwork it if I didn't leave some of the 
remnants of that first initial pass over the canvas. So I like to leave some kind of a history of where it started and allow those to work into the final stage. Do you work on a bunch of them at the same time, no. one at a time? I don't have the space for it. If I had space, I would probably work on multiple paintings, but I just had to do these one at a time. What's your studio like? <laughs> it's, right now, it's on the side of my kitchen at the base of a staircase. I asked her if she grew the flowers that became the subjects of her art. I wish that I had a garden uh, <laughs> to work from. That's something that I would love to do in the future. But a lot of these are from photographs that I took. Many of them are from the Lewis Ginter Botanical Gardens near Richmond, Virginia. Some of these are older photographs that I took here and there. What I tend to do is crop them and figure out a good composition even before I begin the painting. And then as I'm painting, start to figure out what stands out as the focal point and figure things out compositionally as I paint. So it does change from the photo. The thing I'm trying to do is not force the subject on the viewer, but let them find it and discover it as they're looking. So I don't put the main subject right in the center or have it supported by all these other shapes or colors. And I want the eye to move around and continue moving around and not just zoom in on a focal point. There's almost an abstract expressionist quality to some of them. Were they an influence on you as a younger artist? Oh yeah, I think when I was in school, undergrad at VCU, that was all they talked about. <laughs> a lot of my professors grew up looking at that stuff and they introduced me to that work and I definitely was uh, inspired by the abstract expressionists and the impressionists as well, post-impressionists. A lot of them, it seems like there's one dominating color as a ground. In this one, it's green, and then you have all the other colors popping out of that green. Is that something you think about? Or? Oh, yeah. I try to keep a consistent color palette so that there's some kind of a harmony to it and not just chaotic. So I do try to keep it within a certain color scheme. Sounds like a color theory teacher to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I used to teach color theory, okay. too. Split complementaries and that kind of stuff. Right, yeah. You'll see a lot of complementary color schemes here. Okay. <laughs> Knowing that Naomi is a Korean-American, I asked her if she had ever visited Korea. I have once, and it was in 2005. Even my mother, who was born in Korea, felt like it was a new place for her because she had come to the United States in the early 70s and hadn't been back to Korea in many years. So on the trip that I took with her, it was as fresh and new to her. It was a good trip that helped me to see the way of life and how they viewed the younger and the elder, which was I felt different than in the United States. Probably better. Yeah, a lot more reverence and respect for both older and younger. Were there any landscapes there that caught your eye? Yeah, the rice paddies, there's a certain color in the fields that I responded to. There's different trees and birds and plant life. So. Have you done any paintings of those? Yeah, my uncle has the one painting I did of a Korean tree. When I was photographing your work before the opening, there was a woman saying, now this is just so beautiful. This is one of the most beautiful shows I've ever seen. So uh, you should feel good about that. Oh, that's a great compliment. I wish I met her. Was yeah. she here earlier? Yeah, oh. she just laughed. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Thanks, so, yeah. Anyway, I think a lot of people are going to think that way. Thank you. I think one of the biggest compliments I've gotten on my artwork was that the woman just didn't know what it was, why she liked it, but there's something that she couldn't explain. And I hope that some people feel that way. I have no doubt about that. They say that behind every great man is a great woman. But in this case, behind a great woman artist is a great six-year-old assistant, Naomi's son, Henry. Does your son help? He does. I could tell you a lot of anecdotes. Just give me one. To be honest... The acrylic, the little pinks and reds were him. I allowed him to use a blank canvas and just play and paint with acrylics. And that's actually a little bit of his work right there. Oh, so if you sell it, are you going to yeah. give him a cut? <laughs> <laughs> 
He deserves that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. Naomi Chung's beautiful show, Greenhouse Garden, will be up at Gross McLeaf through January 28th, 2023.